Hi, everybody. International publicist Michelle Tennant Nicholson here. I am the co founder of Friends of East Flat Rock.org, and I have a very special guest with me. We're doing an educational series, as you know, with Friends of East Flat Rock. And with me is Greg Halford, who not only were you born and raised here, Greg, but tell us a little bit about your great, 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 about the guy who started it all. Tell us about him. Yes, uh, th through my uh, grandmother, uh, Abraham Kirkendall, uh, was awarded 600 acres that are, after fighting in the Revolutionary War. And he eventually expanded it to 6,000 acres as a de decent businessman. And it became what we know now as Flat Rock. So he was the first uh, to, to get it established. And he um, had a tavern where the Mud Creek Baptist Church is today and, and did very well with it. And uh, in fact, he donated the land to Mud Creek Baptist Church. Oh, isn't that great? Well, I love the whole history. So most of you who grew up here are probably going to remember a history of treasure in the forest. and. Um, let me just let me just tell one on myself. It's a good thing I make a lot of money, Greg, because I like to spend a lot of money. So when I was reading about his wife and the reason why he went out into the forest to hide his gold and silver so that his wife wouldn't spend it, I said that sounds about right because my husband's always looking at my uh, tax returns. He's like, "Baby, where are you putting all this money?" <laughs> so my husband also encourages me to save a lot of money. So. Uh, Thank goodness, you know, I allow him to do that. But that just cracked me up. You know, we've got, he's the saver, I'm the spender, and I could completely relate to your family's. Uh, so do you think the treasure's still out there? You think That's what we're told. It? It's still out there. There's, there's a lot of theories. There's been treasure hunters who've tried to find it. All I can tell you, based on family lore, is that um, it took two well-built men to carry the pot of gold that he had. And um, they were blindfolded, and he crisscrossed them across a creek uh, so many times that they became disoriented, and then they buried it. And then uh, the only clue they had was is one, one of them leaned up against a fir tree to rest, and that's all we know about it. He died before letting anyone know where the gold was buried. Well, as successful business people, what I, I, what I want to say is there's a lot more in life than just money, right? And Absolutely. this story exemplifies that. Or he's out. So the story goes is he went to go get the money on a rainy night, fell, and then he died, right? He drowned in the creek or whatnot. Um, right. so, and you're a successful businessman. Tell people about um, Hendersonville's Best. Hendersonville Best. This is a passion project of mine. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate is, is growing up uh, in, in the community. Um, I was taught there. My values were, were, were placed by this community. And, and I feel a calling and a sense of, of home and belonging, and I just want to give back. And so we've created a travel and local website called HendersonvilleBest.com. And our goal is to promote Hendersonville, not only as a travel and tourist destination, but, but just people who want to just come here and move and live and enjoy. And long term, I hope businesses succeed. People love to come here. And, and um, there's more opportunity for our kids. Yeah, I just really love this site, and I want to acknowledge you for helping us out with our advertising, and I want to, um, I want to acknowledge that if any other business, man or woman, would like to get in front of our now close to 10,000 neighbors, then please contact us at friendsofeastflatrock at gmail.com, or you can go to the website, friendsofeastflatrock.org. And there's a form at the bottom where you can contact me. Greg just texted me, you know, my, my, I'm a publicist, my information's public. And he said, hey, I want to help out. How can I help out? And so I really appreciate you contacting me and helping us out because I wasn't born here. I was born and raised in Kentucky. And so I do enjoy hearing about the history. I know that I have a strong commitment to the future of the area and being able to fill in the gaps of uh, what made this a special place to begin with, to bring whitewater kayakers and mountain bikers like myself here. Um, I need to know, you know, what you all did in your families um, that made it such a beautiful place and to then support and get up under that. 
So I have a strong commitment to the Green River because I am a kayaker and I also have a strong commitment to um, Flat Rock, uh, the Carl Sandburg area, DuPont and so forth. Greg, as a, for me, and I'm a former publicist for the Gorge Zipline and Green River Adventures, you know, I see tourism as the future of this area. I do not see it as an asphalt plant. Tell me your view, no, having raised here and having successful businesses, because my view is still considered a little bit of an outside view. You're the inside view. Tell me about that. Well, mine's kind of inside and outside. Obviously, Hendersonville has changed dramatically since I was a kid uh, growing up there. Um, and it's, it's only gotten better, in my opinion, in many, many ways. Sure, there's, there's other things that we're dealing with, maybe the widening of 26 and, and, and some of the parking issues. But overall, we, we've seen a lot of progress. We enjoy a lot of great restaurants. We, we have so many cool things to go do. Um, and I see that as the future. And then you throw in the COVID-19 right now. Uh, people wanting to be in locations where they, they desire to be versus having to be located in a, a major city. I only see our growth growing in, in Hendersonville and more opportunity coming to us. And I think that brings more op, uh, jobs for our locals uh, to, to, to service these, these folks. And, and um, you know, whether it's construction of houses, restaurants, or you know shopping or just other types of industries um i feel like that we we've got a nice growth path we need to manage that growth and we need to protect our environment while we do it but um i'm all for it i'm all for progress but it's got to be the right kind of progress and i think tourism is going to play a major role in our economy yeah so i just i want to talk a little bit about um, the East Flat Rock Community Plan as published by the Henderson County Planning Department. And so um, we've done uh, some extensive research on what the uh, county commissioners, the planning department, what they see for the future. And there's a lot of great stuff happening, for example, in Charlotte, where they have the planning that includes lots of, of greenery and um, making people the focus versus profit the focus. Absolutely. One of the, things, the national, the, so uh, 3.1 in the plan says, encourage the protection of surrounding, here, I'm just going to share this one thing while I read it. So okay. it's this area right here. Encourage the protection of surrounding land and water resources that may not be within the East Flat Rock boundary. There are many important natural resources in the county that have a direct impact on health and quality of life within East Flat Rock. The county should support those efforts and related recommendations in adjacent community plans. So there's one. I also like this piece about the Green River Watershed. So just moving uh, a few yes. pieces down here, the Green River Watershed is heavily forested watershed with excellent water quality and healthy streams. This area of the county has been known for its pristine waters and is the headwaters to a number of sub waterheads. So that as a kayaker and you know an environmentalist at heart, that's the thing that I wanna protect. So what do you see Greg as the future? What are you worried about with an asphalt plant in this location? Well, I grew up um, about a mile from where this the proposed plant's going to be in, in Flat Rock, um, but just right beside East Flat Rock. And um, I kept, my, my mom and dad had passed and I kept the house. And then we built on cottages and, you know, picnic areas and we, it borders Laurel Creek right there that goes into to the Green River. And my goal was to give my girls the opportunity to enjoy the things that I did when I was growing up there. And so I'm trying to pass it on to the next generation, just as my parents passed it on to me. And so I've invested quite heavily, uh, you know, personally there, but I'm, I'm invested emotionally. Oh, Greg, I just, well. hold on, um, repeat, just, you just I remember, froze up right there. Uh, Greg, you just froze for a second. So you said that you were, um, uh, in, you're invested, uh, but also emotionally. And then we didn't hear what you said after that. 
Well, see, I played in the, in Laurel Creek. I, I played in the Green Rivers. I had the swimming holes there. I, I played in the woods and, and uh, rode my bike and those kinds of things. And I just want to get have let other people have that opportunity and my daughters to have that and my grandchildren to have that opportunity that I've had. And so uh, an asphalt plant, if, if, if we go in there and we start polluting the water and everything else, Hendersonville will cease to be why it's popular. We're going to lose a lot of tourism. We're going to lose a lot of people wanting to come in and move. We're going to lose a lot of opportunity. I'm not against asphalt plants. I just want to make that clear. But they got to be put in the right place uh, in an industrial zone. And, 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 and yes, we got to take precautions and they've got to have high quality equipment and all those things. And we've got, you know, property set aside for, for that. But a residential area so close to so many natural resources, I, I would hope that, that we could find a better location. Yeah, and the, the one thing, you know, many people considered this pretty much the entry point to Hendersonville. It's a gateway to many places. Sure. And um, one of the things I see here in the East Flat Rock Community Plan is to encourage open space through voluntary conservation and development design practices. Um, the county should work with appropriate state agencies to promote the area for recreation and explore opportunities for additional access to the game lands. So what do you, uh, when I moved here in 2004, we checked the zoning because we had intention of creating a chicken farm and, a, and I've got 300,000 bees in the backyard because uh, I wanted okay. to get back to our community. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a green thumb. So I right. thought what well, the next best thing is, is to pro provide a bunch of bees, right? For our, uh, gardens and whatnot. So I'm doing the bee part. <laughs> I'm doing the pollinator part, right? Um, but and I the apple farmers love you for that too. I will say again? The apple farmers will love you for that as well. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Sky Top Orchard. And I'll, I forgot to tell Randy, I was on the phone with Randy Newman yesterday, and um, I forgot to tell him that. So I'll have to go back and let him know because he will definitely like that, right? Because he's just over here by Blue Ridge Community College. Right. Well, the, the other thing is, is, um, you know, the zoning, right? So my husband and I are like, okay, great. Let's check the zoning before we invest all this money into a farm and a, and a house and whatnot. Um, so we check the zoning. It's residential and office commercial. We're like, great. It's near Spartanburg Highway. This is where the county's going to grow. One day, you know, our property is going to be worth a lot of money and we'll probably sell it to some type of commercial entity because of where we sit, right? Something Absolutely. that his smart daddy did. And we were like, we're gonna do the same thing. I never thought that we would be facing industrial or manuf manufacturing. And um, there are some reports that say we would lose 40% of our property value. Um, others are more conservative and say 11, but it's still a significant bite in what we've been working for since 2004. Um, what are you, what are the concerns that you see probably historically around zoning in this area and property values? And what are your concerns about that? Without a question. I mean, it's going to drop values. I mean, I, I do invest in real estate. Uh, that's one of my sideline. Uh, and I have, you know, properties in Charlotte, for example, and, and South Carolina and, and, and around. And anytime you location, location, location. And when you mess with that location, you're going to do either something positive or negative negative to the, to the property values. And so I can't see any upside of having an asphalt plant for anyone in, in the immediate area at all. And just well, so you know, getting back to the tourism thing, I own a vacation rentals in Charlotte and we are not doing any business hardly since COVID in uptown Charlotte, but I have been more full this year in, in Flat Rock than I have ever been uh, since I started uh, about 10 years ago. So it, it's just proof that, that we are growing in the right direction. Isn't that an interesting tidbit? Yes, I absolutely. Wonder, yeah, because yeah. people want to get to the mountains to get away. They're just, they've got, ironically, when you get cabin fever, you want to go to the mountain cabin. You want to go to the mountain cabin and you want to get outside and you want to go hike and you want to see the waterfalls and you want to go and kayak and maybe you, maybe I'm not a kayaker. You're younger than I am. So I'll take a tube down the Green River. How's that? You know, I like doing look, stuff like that. You know, look, we're not that we're not that different. I turn 51 next Wednesday. Can you believe that? And so I like a good tube. Okay. <laughs> yep. 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 
I got the joint pain. Come on. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So the other, um, yeah, I'm also just worried for our farmers. You know, I really am worried for our apple orchards. When I think of Hendersonville, my brother, who's in uh, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, he found uh, an ad uh, in one of the in-flight magazines when he was traveling a few years ago mm -hmm. and was tickled by, you know, what our tourism board was doing for Hendersonville, right? Absolutely. And, um, but what I, and, and they were, it was sort of like, it's for couples, it's for lovers, just like Virginia is for lovers type that branding. When I think of our branding, though, in Hendersonville, I mean, it's antiques. People come in here to look at antiques, but it is apples. I mean, it is all about apples. And we already have um, three or four asphalt plants in Henderson County, some of which have been hotly uh, contested. I just don't think that we need more. And I think that if we look at the future of Hendersonville, it is apples, it is tourism. And so getting around that um, and then really helping our industrial manufacturing businesses find appropriate locations away from schools, churches, and, um, you know, residents, right? We're about, I was uh, talking to the fire marshal earlier and we are um, three times the number of residents that we are in Tar Hill. So it's just, we're densely packed and- Absolutely. The Garin, yeah, the Guerin family overlooks, they're within 400 feet and they uh, homeschool their kids, uh, their grandkids. They're registered with the North Carolina a school board. And then with the pandemic, you know, they're there, but even in a typical school year, the Hillendale, there's about uh, 15, you know, I think about like 1500 little lungs, you know, right there at Hillendale that would be breathing in the exhaust, the plume. They say they meet the measures, uh, Greg, but they just meet the measures with schools, right? So it's like a, a mile is the limit and they're like, it's a mile point one. And so if we think about our schools that are close by, and uh, I had another gentleman who uh, wasn't, wasn't southerly with me, wasn't neighborly with me, but he told me that I was basically full of it for worrying about Carl Sandburg. Carl Sandburg is within two miles. In your opinion, would that affect Carl Sandburg's legacy? Two miles from the asphalt plant? Am I being just crazy about it? Just ridiculous. You, you know, I, I don't know if it's two miles. I don't know what the, the magic line is, but I know this that, you know, I mean, what are they known for at Carl Sandburg beside his poetry is the goats. People go and see the goats. They want to see nature. And so that's that's the key. I mean, um, and then not only do you have Hillendale, but you've got Flat Rock Middle School right beside it. Uh, East High is not too far from it either. Um, and, and by the way, I went to all those schools uh, at East, Flat, East Flat Rock Elementary back when it was an elementary school. And so um, we enjoyed going out and playing ball and sports and, and having, you know, fresh air and, and clean water to drink. And so I, I want to pass that on to everyone. Yeah, Mr. Reese Snyder, I interviewed him yesterday. He is a, he's a, um, a veteran and mm -hmm. he had his forever dream home. Um, near Grimesdale, where mm -hmm. the other asphalt plant um, in 2001, 2002 was also, it actually was fought against by neighbors and they lost. And that's what actually uh, created the zoning laws that we have today that actually protects what's here in East Flat Rock. Well, Mr. Snyder is about a mile from the asphalt plant, he says it's so bad he can't go outside. So he got new windows, so he can't hear the noise and he and his wife, they don't have the capacity to move. And so in their golden years at 87, he stays in the house and he doesn't go out on his back porch because there's a film of soot on the back porch. So, um, you know, just, just black particles. And he's like, you know, if you think that, and that's a mile away. So then that's like where the schools are going to be, you know? And um, I know the Grimesdale neighborhood from years ago, that was a very nice neighborhood. Uh, and so that, that's quite a shame to say the least. So I think that people need to just really be thinking about that. Uh, so here you got two business people here talking about the future of Hendersonville and Henderson County. 
is tourism and um, not this type of industry that's located near neighborhoods. And so what do you recommend, Greg? What, do you have any last words for our 9,000 neighbors? You know, a couple of things. I, I, I'm putting faith in, in our commissioners that they understand this. They, they've lived here. They, they want the same things. Um, I think that, you know, that Mr. Shipman has a right to be an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I get it. But there's a right way and a wrong way about going about things. And so, um, you know, and, and in terms of our commissioners, I think they will be able to, to ferret this out. They'll be able to uh, understand that, uh, hey, you know, uh, my dad worked at GE, but I know that GE had a major cleanup there. Even though it, it's a good big company, they still had issues. And so uh, a small company is definitely going to have some issues. There's just no way around it. And things do come up that you don't plan for. I mean, one of the, the uh, givens of life besides death and taxes is forecasts are wrong. Um, you can look at the weather to figure that out. And so, um, you know, we know that it, it, he will do his best. I'm sure Mr. Shipman will do the best he can, but he can't guarantee it. And, uh, and he doesn't have the resources if he's wrong. And so at least I'm assuming so. Um, so I would imagine that th the best thing of it is, is leave this as it is, let's build the tourism. If he wants to build an asphalt plant, let's get him an appropriate area for that. And let's just trust our commissioners to do the right thing um, because you know, they got to live here as well. And so um, it, it, and if, if they want to mess up their own backyard, I, I don't think that's wise. And so I don't think they'll do that. I think they'll, they will hold the, the plan that they have in place, and I think they will uh, keep the zoning in place. And uh, I think we'll be okay. I really do. It's one of those arguments for zoning. You know, I know mountain people, when I first moved here, and I went to a lot of the meetings in Saluda, and boy, the conversation about zoning is a very interesting one in the mountains, right? Does it really protect us? Absolutely. Does it hurt us? Does it protect industry? Does it hurt industry? I mean, these are things to... And I would just want to say at this point, by the way, if you haven't heard, General Electric is against the asphalt plant. Um, they have a strong commit to, commitment, um, given the history that they have in this area, to be good stewards of the land. Uh, I also want to just do a shout out to vote, right? So people a lot of times are cor uh, armchair quarterbacks. And they have a lot That's to good. say at the, around coffee clutches about this and that. But whether you're going to vote your, uh, just vote your values. You right. know, we all have different values and that is okay. Just have your voice be known. And that's all I ever wanted when I learned that this was happening on June 1st. I thought, what a travesty if all my neighbors don't have an opportunity to tell the commissioners what's important. So I'm delighted, Greg Halford, that you got the message and you're having your voice not only heard, but you're helping us financially with the, uh, the advertising. Thank you so much. And that you spent time with me today to help educate people on your unique history in the area and your vision for the future. Thank you so much. Well, uh, you're quite welcome. Uh, this is the first time I've ever spoken out about anything. I'm basically an introverted kind of guy and I like to stay to myself. So for me to come out, uh, that that's that's a big move for me to 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 come out. I'm I'm just not a camera guy. I'm behind the scenes kind of guy. So oh, well, um, I didn't know that you you know you're like my husband. My husband for sure always pushes me out front. He does not care to be in front of the camera. And he was in fact my husband from Mississippi voted most shy in high school. I, I, right? I was I was a uh, fairly shy in high school as well. And all my my classmates can attest to that. No, I, well, I, time, you know? I always have a soft spot oh. for the shy guys, you know, so, <laughs> well, you know where I was, I was on the, I was on the intercom every morning, cracking people up with the morning announcement. So I guess we just, you know, the, the best indicator of past uh, behavior is future, the past, the best indicator of future behavior is past behavior. And uh, I don't know Jeff Shipman personally. I don't know. Right. I went to school with his sister. And, and Melanie is fine, but I don't know Jeff personally. He was a, a little younger than I was uh, coming to the school system. And, and I wish him well. I don't, I don't wish ill will on anyone, but let's do what's right for the community. You know? That's right. Uh, same. I feel the same. And, and um, 
I've been telling people, let's treat each other neighborly. Let's channel our inner uh, Mr. Rogers. Right. But Mr. Rogers didn't say you don't speak out for yourself. Sure. He just said that you get in touch with the, uh, remember the little puppet, Mr. 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 and Mrs. McFeely or whatever, like how do you feel? <laughs> so get in touch with how you feel right. and speak your mind. And we have a legislative process in place. They're called our commissioners and we voted them in. So Correct. we have to be okay with what they vote and then choose what's best for us. But until September, 2020, when they vote on our, uh, our, our issue here, uh, we're going to keep people educated and encouraging them to speak their minds. And for that, I thank you. Thank you.